Good evening and welcome to St Andrew's time of evening prayer on this quite overcast Tuesday. Um, doesn't feel very summery today, I've been a bit chilly. This evening we're going to be reading from Micah chapter 7 verses 14 and 15, 18, 19 and 20. We're going to read Psalm 85 verses 1 to 7 and Matthew 12 verses 46 to the end and I'll be following the evening prayer booklet that we've had access to. If you need one please make leave a comment in one in the section and we will make sure we can get one to you somehow. I think they're also available to download on St Andrew's webpage but please if you want one make sure that we know that you need one sending to you or however. So welcome whatever your day has been like I pray you'll be blessed by our time together as we unite as brothers and sisters in Christ to spend time together to refocus and to pray and remembering that whatever our day has been like and whatever challenges and difficulties we face we're not on our own as we face them so we'll start with those words from Deuteronomy the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms I just love those, those words the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And our opening sentences. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And let's just pause for a moment to offer our day to God. The good things, the bad things, the things that have made us smile and those things that might have disappointed us. God make speed to save us and we say together Lord make haste to help us. Our first reading tonight is from Psalm 85 verses 1 to 7. If you want to read it with me listen to me however you want to do it as Dave um, Cullen often says you read what you want. He often does alternate verses but you just read this or listen. You Lord showed favour to your land you restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Saviour, and put away your, disple your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'm going to follow with our scripture reading from Micah, Micah 7, verses 14 and 15, and then 18 to 20. So starting with verse 14. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance, which lives by itself in a forest in fertile pasture lands. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in days long ago, as in the days when you came out of Egypt. I will show them my wonders. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. You will be faithful to Jacob and show love to Abraham as you pledged on oath to our ancestors in days long ago. So just a short reflection on both of our readings and what struck me about them when I was preparing for this evening was forgiveness and the mercy of God. Who forgives like our God? Who delights in steadfast love like our God? Who has compassion? Who removes sins forever? Who shows faithfulness like our God? Who keeps their word like our God? And in verse 15 of our reading from Micah, 
the question was asked, who is a God like you? And I think that we know that the answer is no one. No one is like our God. And sometimes in the busyness of life or just because we're caught up in the familiar routines that we all have, it can be easy not to stop and realise and reflect on just how incredible our God is. Do we think about things like he delights in steadfast love? That he doesn't just forgive us our sins, but he takes great joy in showing compassion towards us. Have we ever thought about him treading our sins underfoot and hurling them into the depths of the sea? In other words, removing them completely. Or do we sometimes take things for granted and act as though this is simply what God does when we bring our confessions to him? But the cross reveals to us that taking care of our sins was anything but simple, nor was it something that God had to do. Jesus died as a perfect sacrifice for sin. And that's a wonderful love that God has for us. The Hebrews tells us that Jesus went to the cross for joy that was set before him. So Christ hasn't just paid for our sin and lavished his love on us, but it's been his joy and delight to do so. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our final reading is from our Gospel reading from Matthew, chapter 12, starting at verse 46. Jesus is talking about his mother and brothers here. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. When we hear this reading, it might seem as if Jesus has been quite disrespectful to his mother and family. But what he's doing is telling the people around him that there are two ways of being family. The first, he belongs to his earthly family, to, his Ma to Mary and his brothers and other relations. And he wasn't dishonouring them. And then he went on to explain to the crowd that his other family is made up of those who do the will of God. And that means us. We are members of that one family where God is our father. We are cherished members of his family. He loves us unconditionally and his loving presence is reaching out to us in our lives even in the most <coughs> excuse me even in the most unlikely of situations he guides us to be disciples of his love when we encounter God and we walk the journey of faith with him we can show and share to the world that we live in the light of his love and we are all treated equally in the sight of God. And we are reminded that we are to love God, our Father, and to love our neighbour with one and the same love. Amen. So we'll turn now to a time of prayer. There'll be times of quiet. If you want to add your own prayers, if you want to put a name in the comments box, please do. And other people who are joining us this evening, I'm sure, will pray for that person. You don't need to leave any explanation, just a name. God knows. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for revealing your word to us and allowing us to become your children, part of your family. Use us to tell others of your love and forgiveness. Help us not to allow the things of this world to become a distraction from serving you. Thank you for those who have taught us and helped us in our walk with you. Amen. Lord, we bring before you those we know who are ill or suffering in any way. We pray for those listed on our prayer sheet, for John, Jane, Iris, Carol, Paul, Carol, Sharon, 
Catherine, Karen, Anne, Susan, Geoffrey, Sophia, John, Pamela, Tony, Diane and Christopher. And we pray for those who are known to us personally. And we pray that you will comfort the families and friends of all who are grieving. And I want to add Colin, John and Ross to that list. And we pray for day, today for Howard Morley and the people who live in Drummond Close and Dunelm Walk, who, our, who is our person and streets to be prayed for today. And we pray tonight for those people close to us. We pray for their health and their needs, their joys and their fears. Protect them in every moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they need to take. Decisions they need to face too. Protect their homes and relationships. We pray that you would lay on our hearts the people who may be in need of a little more support at the moment. And we lift to you, Christine. Lord, you know Christine's situation and we just pray for your peace and your love in her heart. Amen. And loving God, we pray for those who are dealing with the financial implications and employment issues following this pandemic. We pray that you would guide and support them as they face, as they face the difficult decisions and situations that are ahead. And we've been asked also to pray tonight for Heather, Kenny and Karen. So loving God, we lift these people to you too. Be with them in their need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to you, to your unfailing and tender care this night, all who are ill or in pain. And we think particularly of those people that we've, na we've named. Knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal, restore them people to health and to strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for our leaders in whatever capacity they lead us, praying that they have a willingness to hear and respond and to reach out to those under their authority. And we finish tonight's prayers with the collect for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. So as one family, let's all pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come towards the end of our time together. So we conclude by saying, in peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. And if you've got the words in front of you, let's say together. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. 
So thank you very much for being part of Evening Prayers tonight. May you feel God's love and peace and joy with you in whatever you're doing for the rest of the evening. And morning prayers will be led tomorrow morning at nine by calf if you want to join us then. So thank you and good night. <laughs>